Hi gang, so the good people at Horus Heresy Legions got in touch with me and I immediately felt a bit in remiss. It's a game that I've seen around for a few years and as a card game based in the Horus Heresy, something I kind of felt like I should have been playing before this point, especially because a lot of the art it uses is actually based on an older game, a different Horus Heresy collectible card game. So in this video, I'm gonna take a little look at Games Workshop's history with collectible card games, and finally, give Horus Heresy Legions a go. So Games Workshop have a bit of a storied history with card games stretching all the way back to the 90s with the Citadel combat cards. But that's not really a CCG as we'd know it. Combat cards were kind of just top trumps in different packaging. And anyway, Snipe and Wib already have a fantastic video about the history of that little game and its many editions. But if we want to talk about collectible card games, our story probably starts a bit later, in 2001, with the release of the Warhammer 40,000 collectible card game by Sabretooth Games. It was 2001, magic was huge and CCGs were a thing, and Games Workshop wanted to get in on the action. But unlike nowadays, where Games Workshop licenses their IP out for third-party games companies, Sabretooth were actually a subsidiary company of Games Workshop and fell under their BL publishing imprint, a bit like the Black Library novels, which is no surprise. I guess they're paper products for a miniatures company. The game was a card battler played over a number of rounds, each of which represented a sector the two players were fighting over, where the sector went to the player with the most units in play at the end of the round. It clocked up five expansion sets over the next few years, but it was never that popular, and it only stayed in print for a couple of years. The real development for our purposes here comes in 2003, when a sort of second edition of the game was released by Sabretooth. The Horus Heresy card game was released as a base set of 152 cards, creating two 60 card decks, along with the sector cards needed to play and a few boosters. It was a streamlined and rewritten version of the original game, again based around controlling multiple sectors at the end of your round. But it's not really the gameplay that makes this game so well known. It's the art. The Horus Heresy had never really been mapped out in any particular detail before. We had the base story and occasional snippets of fluff and a couple of images from early books, but you know, nothing big. The Horus Heresy card game necessitated the creation of tons of imagery, a whole new look for the heresy. And because the card game also featured numerous background cards and expansions, the history of the heresy itself was built out in a way it hadn't before. The Webway Project, the Sisters of Silence, the reinvention of the Custodes, and tons of other little bits of fluff were invented basically for this game, or at least so that this game made some sort of internal sense. One of the biggest developments was the decision to use old Games Workshop model designs that had been discontinued as the standard design for the heresy era R. So in the Horus Heresy card game, Marie Marines rode around in these old 1980s model rhinos, or pilot 90s model land speeders, and dreadnoughts look like these epic scale designs from the early 90s. It's a really clever way to make this great event from the lore feel both separated from and connected to the current model range, and it would have huge ramifications for how we see 40k and the history of the models. The art and background were so influential it was eventually compiled into four Visions of Heresy art books, and then a huge tome called Collective Visions, which has been released in a few formats over the years. But it was this card game and these art books that really created the Horus Heresy setting that we know, and the background invented for it and the design decisions made have influenced the direction of it right up to the current edition. But while the art has been consistent, the game itself, again, didn't last very long. Expansions were published up until 2005, after which Sabretooth reused the game system for their new 40k based game. Dark Millennium. But in 2008, Sabretooth were closed down and their products discontinued as Games Workshop started the move to third party suppliers. A lot of the licenses they used to deal with moved over to Fantasy Flight. And while Fantasy Flight would release some really fun closed box card based games like Warhammer 40,000 Conquest, the real world 40k CCGs kind of stopped there. 
So when I started seeing all that old Horus Heresy art pop up again online a few years ago, I really meant to investigate sooner than this. The Horus Heresy Legions is a card battler, a video CCG, published by Everguild in 2018 and available for PC and mobile devices. And one of the things that immediately drew my attention to it was that the game uses a lot of that old art from the Horus Heresy CCG. The rules though are a whole new system, designed I think to be a bit more mobile device friendly and to do a few things that normal real world card games would find difficult. And it centers around the familiar CCG objective of killing the other guy's warlord. There are currently a load of different warlords to pick from, including classics like Loken or Abaddon of the Sons of Horus, and new additions as the game has expanded, like Ayrton Massad of the Solar Auxilia, which means the pool of card art has also been expanded, which is really useful for people who make glorified slideshows, like me. There have been numerous expansions to the game since 2018. They've been going for four years now and released a new expansion every six months or so. But the most recent is Titan Death, which gives you the option of running God Machine Titans as your warlord and kind of half your army, as you might expect. Now, of course, the release model for a game like this is something I don't have a lot of experience with. It's free to play and you can play through single player campaigns to level up, getting access to new cards as you do. But there's also online play options along with the downloadable content and in-game currency mobile games tend to come with, which aren't really usually features of the ancient single player games I tend to play. But while that sort of thing might have annoyed me in some other formats, it kind of fits for a game based on a CCG, right? Where gambling on booster packs is kind of part of the whole deal. Anyway, while I'd usually just purchase a Steam bundle and play my way through the single player campaign to my heart's content, Everguild generously gave me a bit of in-game currency and decks to try out. So I've managed to get a decent idea of how the game functions with a few different warlords and commanders. But in this video, I'm gonna go back to basics and give you an introduction to the game by playing through one of the pivotal moments in the campaign. <laughs> So here we are at Horus Heresy Legions on the homepage. So look, I've been playing the uh, initial uh, starting campaign, which is set on Istvan III, where the four traitor legions purge their ranks of loyalists. And at the start, you play as Loken. That's this guy here. Uh, and look, the nice people at, um, at Legions have given me some decks to try out. So I've got Istvan Spear Tip, and I've got a lot of these, which has allowed me to figure out the breadth of what they do. But for this video, I'm actually going to stick with Loken, partly because it's a good broad deck and partly because it makes all the narration make sense. So we are midway through the campaign for Istvan 3. I'm sticking with the Garbial Loken deck and you can see down here it's got all the normal things that you'd expect from a game like this. Um, I can get various uh, you know, achievements that give me some cards, lovely, and coins. Uh, this is all stuff I'm not particularly familiar with because, but it's all like normal mobile game stuff, I suppose. Um, so these are hands that I could then build decks out of. Um, here are some cards, you know, I can then go and change my deck, start a new deck and, and build a new set of things. Um, but yeah, as I said, for this, I'm going to stick with Loken. Let's go into battle on Isfan 3. Uh, winning is survival. Traitor Sons of Horus breach the palace. Hold them at all costs. Defeat the enemy. Here we go. Oh, ooh, who's he? Right, here we go. Oh, our buddy Saul is telling us about things. Oh dear. Right, I think that's the uh, that's the bit of preview I've got. So, here we are. We've started our first game. We get a choice of um, sort of nixing any of our initial heart, uh, initial hand. Now, because of the way energy works in this game, um, I'm going to want to keep a couple of simple things. So actually, that's not, I think, from my limited experience, that's not a terrible hand. So I'm going to say yes, I'll take that. So um, this game is broadly similar. Oh, here we go. Sorry. Let's just let the story happen. Okay, so it's my go. Um, oh no, this guy's this guy's not happy with us. Durkast of the Sons of Horus. 
Okay, good. I think that's all the plot, everybody. Now, the game. So look, a lot of this is going to be familiar to, to most people who played this sort of card game before, particularly Magic players. Our game here is to try and reduce this Warlord's energy to, to zero. Um, this is the card's attack strength. That is the card's uh, wounds. One of the big things that is different from other, a lot of other card games is when you deploy uh, cards, when you deploy sort of creatures, I suppose, to the uh, battlefield um, and they get hurt, that hurt does not reset. So they will actually take wounds throughout the game and track. It's the sort of thing that's um, annoying to track in a real tabletop game, but very easy to track in a video game. Um, the big uh, mechanic of this is energy. So this is the amount of energy you've got and the amount of energy you start, everyone starts with one energy and then each time they take a turn, the amount of energy available to them goes up by one. Um, deploying cards takes energy. Uh, there are a few sorts of cards. The main ones are these guys. So these are um, infantry or vehicles, which are like creatures, I suppose, that you can deploy to the um, board. And then there are uh, tactics, which are one use effects that you use. Uh, there are also upgrades. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's our basic thing. The other thing that happens is that, that units might also have special abilities that they can use, uh, which cost energy. So right now I could use all my energy if, if Loken decided to fight this guy, I could attack with Loken, which is fine, that's what that card can do, and uh, he would do two damage to this guy, and this guy would do two damage to Loken. Fine, easy. Um, but I could also spend my two energy this turn to use Loken's, uh, let me just hover over that for a second, to use Loken's uh, ability, which does two damage without him taking any. So that's, that's a pretty simple ability. There are more complicated ones. Um, as well as that, there are a load of extra little abilities that things have. Um, this troop is called Frontline. Frontline means that um, your enemy will have to attack them first before they can get to the Warlord, which is handy. Um, tactics, just deal three damage, there we are. Um, there's a Militia that is Relentless. Relentless is a ability that happens at the start of every turn. So if I deploy this guy, every turn another Ferron's Militia will be deployed, which is fun. Again, Again, sort of thing that's really hard to do in a real card game, but really easy to do in a video game. Um, and finally, one of the most important ones to think of is Rally. When you deploy something with Rally, Rally immediately happens. They have an, basically an, an action that happens when they're deployed. Um, yeah, brilliant. Okay, great. Now, I've got two energy. What will I do? Um, why don't I deploy a regiment that's going to be needed to protect me. So there we are. I'll deploy these guys. That's what I'm going to do for my two points. As you'll see, my energy goes to zero. Um, there's nothing else I could do. I can attack. You can see there's, like many um, card games, these guys have what in Magic is called Summoning Sickness. Um, since they've just been deployed, they uh, cannot do anything this turn. They can't use an energy or um, attack. So uh, I'm now going to play Loken. I'm going to fight him. There you go. So we both suffered two damage. Fine, whatever. Speeds the game up a bit, doesn't it? Um, okay, uh, end my turn and let's see what the enemy does. Oh, actually, you know what? Before we do this, let's just check what the enemy can do. So, he's Durkast of the Sons and Horus. Um, right, he is strength two. All the warlords so far, I think, are strength two. Um, and his ability is deals one damage to all enemies for two points, which is, isn't bad. Right, here we go. End turn. Right, so he draws a card at the start of his turn. And he plays to the field with his two points, these guys which is the Lacos squad. Um, drop pod means they're pretty much going to be invulnerable this turn. You can see this little drop pod around the card. Isn't that nice? So they're well defended this turn. Um, and then as of next turn, they will have uh, attack strength three. And it's because they're in their pod. OK, so it's my turn now. I've got three energies. Um, now, uh, these guys are still ably defending me. And I've got some new cards. So uh, that's quite fun, isn't it? But I can't cast it yet. Could do a crack grenade. Deals five damage to a vehicle structure or Titan weapon or two to any other unit. That, I believe, hmm, will that absorbs damage, so I don't think that'll work. Um, deal four damage to a random energy. If I deploy that and then let it happen, then there's a chance it'll just hurt them. Uh, Seek so and destroy, can't be using a warlord. Um, so I think the best thing for me to do now is destroy, is do Feron's Militia, which gives me a bit of uh, defense. And then I'm going to attack with this no you know what i'm going to spend my energy on the garfield's ability to do two damage to them so that's pretty simple isn't it um great all i was trying to do there is get him below me so now if we tr trade blows all game then you know i've got a bit of an advantage right end my turn drop pods off so they're working he's done his special ability which has done one damage and killed my guys 
He's then using the quick fire thing to do two damage to these guys. Damn. All right. And now they're going to target him doing three damage. Okay, that's okay. So that was like destructive. But, um, you know, fine. Whatever. Right. We're on four. Uh, let's have a look. If I do that, I'll get four damage on him, which is quite good. Uh, but I can't do it because it's five, so it's going to have to be Chariot of the Gods, isn't it? Deal four damage. Yeah? Yeah. Great. And then I can attack with Loke and just bring us both down a bit. He draws a card and he deploys a squad. Right, they're by jetpack. So jump pack means uh, that they are unstoppable. That means um, they could ignore frontline units. Uh, attack strength 5 is really strong, but 3 isn't terrible. So what I could do is deploy these guys now and hope to get a good thing. Or uh, I could deploy that. So I've got 5 to spend. I could do both of those things. Here we go. I'll destroy them. That's easy. And then I will use my ability to do two damage to these guys. It's not the most efficient. I've still got a point of energy left that I now can't spend, but it does mean I'm a little ahead of him and he still hasn't got anything that can attack me. Okay, so he's got a Legion uh, Dreadnought. That's uh, back art deployed by Drop Bod, so he can't be hurt this turn. Um, so he's going to get an attack in, and that is a strength five attack. So he's going to attack my Warlord, unless I put something else in front of it. And... Um, yeah, he's going to attack my wall unless I put something else in front of it. So what have I got? I've got an artillery strike. Deal two damage to three random en enemies. Okay. Thunder of Horus, a mauler, a vehicle, which is eight damage. Now, that's quite strong. I'm tempted to just deploy that because I think it's got a lot of staying power and it will get an attack in. What are these? Uh, defense? They're five. So, yeah, okay, fine. Um, I'm, I'm going to deploy Thunder of Horus. And then I'm just going to attack him. end my turn. Right, so I'm pretty sure he is now going to deploy another squad. Right, they can't do anything though. And he's going to target me. I knew that would happen. Right. Brilliant. Oh, I should say, um, unlike a lot of card games, um, in this you don't have to um, deploy and then do your actions or attack first and then deploy. Basically, each card can do one thing, whether that's do its little action or attack, and you can do those in any order and deploy, spend energy to deploy things in any order. So, um, yeah, that's um, a bit different, something you have to watch out for. So he's now got loads of people. Right, what am I going to do against this? Artillery strike seems like a sensible thing. Deal two damage to three random enemies. So... The obvious thing to do, if I kill that thing, then the three random enemies will be these. That's protected and has an attack strength of three. So the artillery strike's worth four. Artillery strike and a crack grenade? Hmm. Now the righteous zealot's quite fun. When they when they die, they become a wounded zealot. Again, the sort of thing you can't really do in a normal card game. Or do I actually deploy a decent squad for my five points? Maybe the thing to do is a I think I do the Hmm. Oh, this is really difficult. So if I do the artillery strike, that'll be these three will all get two damage, which isn't enough. Then that can then kill that. That's easy. That can kill that. That's easy, but it'll take five. I don't want to take five. If I'm lucky, if I deploy that and I'm lucky, I'll get a good response. Hmm. My temptation is to... They're going to do three damage to my commander next turn. And die. No, they won't. Yeah, they will die. Um, my temptation is to... The simplest thing to do is have him attack that and Mauler attack that, which kills them both. That's easy. Um, but, why do, but I could do that... 
Yeah, fine, okay, great. So, decision made, I'm gonna use the artillery strike. No, first, I'm gonna use the crack grenade on that guy. Great. Then I'm gonna use the, oh, that was good. And then I'm gonna use the artillery strike because it was a vehicle, because it was a vehicle that did four damage. Sorry, I wasn't reading that properly. Then I'm gonna use the artillery strike to take out the rest. Yeah, that's right. Ah, uh, so it killed the drop pod, which had two wounds. Yes, okay, all right. And that leaves me open to this guy. This guy attacking that. And this guy attacking that. Good, okay. I think that puts me in a good position. I mean, I probably shouldn't have had Gar Garville attack him, but, but fine, okay. Enter. Okay, he's firing more to strike. Ah, so he killed that, a random enemy. I guess it could have been Loken, that's not as bad. And he does his special ability. Um, which does one damage to me, but then he can't do an attack. That was probably a bad... Oh, I suppose he didn't take two, so I suppose that's the advantage there. Right. Uh, it seems sensible to deploy... Hmm. Oh, there's no point doing that. Seems sensible to deploy... Hannon's Mortars. Because they'll do four damage to that guy and then use my ability. It takes him down to six. Right, brilliant. Right, I've still got one left, which I can't use, but that's fine. It means that Garville hasn't bought him and taken some damage. End turn. Okay, he's drawn a card. And he's done another more to strike. Oh, come on. Oh, great, at least it's these guys. It's really dangerous if it hurts my guy. Right, six to eight. I'm on nine points. If I've got anything that will do damage when it goes into play. No. So, bunker. I'm going to deploy the bunker because that becomes front line and gives me a bit of protection. And then I'm going to deploy, I guess, Chagrat Squad will do some damage next turn. Yeah, that's it. I'm not going to attack him. No, do I attack him? Yeah, I think I actually I will attack him. That'll take me down to six. I doubt he's got anything that does six damage. <laughs> Famous last words. Right, next turn I can kill him. So he just has to not kill me in the next turn. Yeah, okay, fine. That was fine. All right, so these guys have landed in a drop pod. Abaddon's chosen. Oh, no, he's playing Abaddon's chosen. So he's, oh God, oh God, really? So. Right, okay, so let's just recap what happened in that turn. Uh, he played a card, Abacol Squad, um, which are a relatively cheap unit of warriors in a drop pod, so that means he hasn't got much left, that's quite good. Um, he did his ability that did one damage to every enemy, and then he used Abaddon's Chosen to put them in a shield, so they are basically really hard for me to kill now. Not only are they in a two-point drop pod I have to kill first, but they're also in a shield. Uh, um, but that's fine because I think he's only got four left and I'm pretty sure that means I can just do this. Yeah, brilliant. They do five attacks and I win the game. So there you go. Look, obviously we're playing this on um, uh, one of the starter campaigns, so I'm not expecting this to be the most difficult, but that's a pretty good look at how a game of Legions goes. And uh, there we are. Um, I think the last one will be the end game in the campaign. Maybe I should play that again. Maybe I shouldn't. Maybe that's enough for you to get an idea of how this game plays. Um, it's fun. It, it does a few things that card games like this that were real couldn't really do easily. It has a few mechanics that are fun. Um, I can't really comment on a lot of the things like, um, you know, the the peer-to-peer -peer lodge sort of playing system um, or events. Um, uh, or, the, or the shopping systems, like it's all things that I I would be happy, as I said before, I'd be happy just to play through this and get advances as I go. Um, but obviously, if you really want to get into it, there are cards you can buy and things like that. Um, and I've obviously had a chance to try that out completely. Um, but anyway, yeah, that should give you a pretty good idea of what it's like to play a game of this.
and there we go. That's my couple of weeks playing Horus Heresy Legions. Uh, yeah, I really enjoy it. It's a fun little game. If you think you'd like to have a go, well, it's available in all the normal places and their new expansion, Titan Death, is out now. Thanks for watching. And if you'd like more Let's Plays, well, there might be one popping up in that little box on the right there. Please click through. And if you'd like to see some of my videos earlier or support the channel, then there's a Patreon link in the thingy below. See ya.